Hey guys, it's Caleb with Gears and Arms, and today, if you couldn't tell by the intro, we're going to talk about the 2x72 belt grinder that I uh, recently made out of an old treadmill. Let's check it out. Alright, so here is the finished product. Um, and if you've been uh, following along on Instagram, uh, I did post some pictures and videos as I was uh, going along and building it. Um, I will leave a link in the description below to my Instagram if you want to check out the pictures. Uh, I'll give you a little insight on how it's built. It's made from a old treadmill and then some parts I bought and some scrap steel that I was able to um, pick up from the local recycling uh, scrapyard. So far I've ground three bevels with it. Was this little guy? And then I did this one here. And then the third one is this copper blade. And it's, uh, it's worked really well. I'm very pleased with it. A few minor things that I need to tweak on it yet, but nothing that really affects it too much. Total price invested in it so far, just under $100 in it. I got $20 in steel in it that I picked up. Uh, $10 in paint. The hitch receiver, which is what the work rest goes into. This piece right here. That was from Harbor Freight. And that was $12.99. Got about five dollars in bolts in it the skateboard that i purchased just for the wheels for here and here is one of the most expensive parts that was 35 dollars and then i had these rubber isolators down here but to buy a set of four of them is about 12 bucks the treadmill i picked up for free i posted on facebook asking if any of my friends had a treadmill so let's take a little deeper look into it so we'll just start with the treadmill parts. Main part I use in the treadmill is the brushless motor. It's a 2.65 horsepower motor. I use the factory mount, which you see here. All the wiring that I use for it is all this, the wiring from the treadmill. Moving forward is the control panel. This is the control panel out of the treadmill. I cut um, most of the display away, it's normally like two and a half, three feet wide, right over the width of the treadmill. Cut everything that was not essential away. And then this also had a bunch of other displays on here. I just taped off what I wanted to leave, which is the speed. And for kicks, I left the distance. Um, and then also my speed adjustment. I taped uh, those all off, spray painted it black. I've mounted it in this steel box that I had. And also over here is the on off switch from the treadmill. Turn it on here for you. So turn our switch on, let it power up, and then simply just run your speed up. And it'll go quite fast. And now I can either stop it by running the speed down or I can stop it by just flipping off the switch. So as far as making the treadmill motor drive the actual belt, what you're seeing is the factory, uh, I guess you'd say flywheel. And then it has a, a normal belt driven pulley inside here. Uh, it's way too small, way too short. So this is a piece of pipe that I picked up from the local scrapyard and welded it to the flywheel. Try to get it as true as possible. Um, so that is how it's a piece of, I think, two and a half inch um, steel pipe. So the frame, the main base that it sits on is all steel from the treadmill. This is all steel from the treadmill. The only steel in it, in the frame that isn't from the treadmill is this hitch receiver, which is again from Harbor Freight. Get your standard two inch hitch receiver. Uh, this spring up here, this spring up here is, um, is also from the treadmill. It's the, there's two of them and they're under the platform. It gives you a little bit of cushion when you run. 
it actually works out perfect for the the tensioning system so moving forward looking at the tensioning system and tracking system so for tracking the belt left and right we've got a bolt that goes through this upper tube it has a nut welded right here and then let me turn this on that bolt goes all through the tube and then you can see it right here where it pushes against the back side of that hinge. So if I turn this on, if I screw it in, the belt moves closer to the hinge. If I screw it out, the belt moves farther away. Changing out a belt on this is actually very simple and easy. So if I want to change a different belt, turn it off, pull my handle down, slide my old belt off, take the new belt, put it around the motor and the front pulleys, pull my handle down, make sure everything's somewhat aligned, spin my hand a few times to make sure that it's going to track well and doesn't flop as soon as I start and we're ready to roll again. Moving on to the flat platen. This is again just some scraps. All this is scrap steel that I picked up. These are the wheels from the skateboard. They are just drilled and tapped into this plate. It's half inch thick plate. I've got some pieces of angle iron here, which again is drilled and tapped into the plate. And I've got a piece of half by two inch flat stock that is the actual flat platen. Um, this is drilled and tapped into a piece of quarter inch thick two by two square tubing. And I have it slotted to where I can, if I need to, adjust the angle of the platen. Probably won't adjust it too much, but I wanted to build that into it. Uh, there's also a work rest, and that's also all included in that less than $100. It's a piece of half by four and a piece of half inch by two inch uh, flat stock. And I just drilled and tapped some bolts into this one. You see them kind of coming through here, but they're flush, they're ground flush. And this actually bolts up underneath here. I've drilled and tapped two half inch bolts into the bottom of this tube. And so it will actually sit up under there like that. And I can adjust it to where it's 90 degrees to my flat platen. And then last, the work rest is held in, or not the work rest, sorry. The flat platen is held in, I'll take this belt off. With just this half inch bolt here. Again, another nut welded to the outside of the receiver tube. Uh, just loosen it up and the whole work rest comes right out so that way I can in the future when I make a um, I'm gonna make one with a 10 inch contact wheel and then probably something else that has a very small diameter wheel for getting into real tight radiuses um, for now I've just made this Hey guys, hope you liked that video on my 2x72 grinder. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. And again, I'll put a link in the description to my Instagram that has some of the other pictures and some other videos of the whole build process. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.